stupid things Jory Micah says. Hey everybody, welcome back to Stupid Things, Jory Micah Says, episode 28, live on YouTube. I am your host, Norm, the Master's Dog Dunham, aka the Evangelical Norm. Yes, Pugnacious and Contentious is back. As long as Jory Micah has stupid things to say on Twitter, I will have uh, silly comments to uh, make about the stuff she says. So this is... Literally just answering a fool according to their folly. That is the premise of the podcast that I'm doing. Um, I wish I could say it was no quarter November, but it's, you know, I've been doing this for a while now. So we're 28 episodes into this and, and she just doesn't stop saying stupid things. So I continue to answer that fool according to her folly, lest she be wise in her own eyes and with the hopes that some sort of mockery like Elijah did with the prophets of Baal Maybe there's a possibility Jory Micah comes back, repents, and, and comes back into some sort of orthodoxy because she's way out there now. So I try to keep these short and sweet, and I got to keep this one short and sweet because I got guys showing up to my house here in a little bit to tear apart a bathroom, and that's not going to be good for podcast uh, sounds. So we're going to jump right into it. We are going to talk about the tweet that she put out the last couple of days. Obviously, she's been paying attention to the uh, Kyle Rittenhouse trials, which I'm sure many of you have as well. And she's not going to drop from where she has made her stance ever since any of this started without having any information, without knowing anything about what happened. It was a white dude with a gun. And so immediately she's thinking that he is, you know, cold-blooded domestic terrorist is what she says. Kyle Rittenhouse is a cold-blooded domestic terrorist. If he gets away with murder this time, he will do it again. Um, you know what? I was pretty sure the jury was part of that whole, uh, no, don't judge crowd, Right. I mean, I'm sure I know I've probably talked about it in one of these episodes where she has talked about judge not lest you be judged unless you're a white kid with a gun and you're out uh, protecting people's property and then defend yourself and, and shoot some people. So, I mean, if you've been watching this trial, I, this trial is as, as traumatic for Kyle Rittenhouse as it is for anybody else. I mean, one, based on all of the video evidence and everything else. Now, I will say, I don't know how wise it was for him to travel across state lines with a gun to do all that. I mean, he had his reasons. And, and again, I don't know. Maybe I would. If, if there were riots happening in, you know, well, I'm in Utah. If riots were happening in Moscow, Idaho... <laughs> Maybe I would drive up there. Well, Moscow wouldn't need me. If, if riots were happening in Twin Falls, Idaho, maybe I would drive up there if I knew somebody that had business and I would go up there and do what I could to keep their business safe from being burnt to the ground, looted, any of those things. So, I mean, and he was there. He's an EMT. He was there to provide help. He had given medical help to people who were rioting earlier in the day and so on. So... Again, this is this is completely a political thing on her side. She's not looking at this in any way, shape, or form from a Christian worldview at all. And then she goes on to tweet that, uh, imagine if Kyle Rittenhouse was a brown, radicalized Muslim man who did exactly what Kyle did in America. He would be dead or in prison for life. And again, we can't say that for sure. I'm going to be the first to, to recognize that there have been some some unfortunate incidents where police used bad judgment and people have died. Again, go back and you can watch all my podcasting that I did about George Floyd and anybody else. So, you know, we can we can talk about that in any other way, but I don't say 100%. Again, it's it's the whataboutism and the jumping to conclusions. I mean, the 
the sniper in Washington, D.C., who turned out to be a black guy and a kid, they weren't killed. They, they weren't killed or anything. So, again, we can't say 100% that this is something that would absolutely happen, right? There's no way to say that this is, is, is what. But then the, the tweet that she threw, throws out the next day, and this is, this is the clincher that shows the absolute unhinged, non-consistent uh, con, uh, worldview that she lives in because she says this. People running around doing whatever the hell they want, causing chaos and harm, must must be held accountable. Now, obviously, this is her intention of pointing this at Kyle Rittenhouse. But Jory, that's what Kyle went to Kenosha to do. He went to do what he could to stop all the people who were running around doing whatever the hell they want and causing chaos and harm. He was trying to protect a business from those people, and you never had a problem. And I'm pretty sure I remember you tweeting in support of rioters and looters. Well, these people have insurance and da, 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 right? I'm pretty sure if I go back and look, I can find the tweets of you supporting the rioters and the looters. And but now because Kyle Rittenhouse. Now people running around doing whatever the hell they want, causing chaos and harm, must be held accountable. Unless, of course, they're rioting and looting and they're people of color. Again, I mean, this is the reality of where Jory Micah lives right now. Because all of her tweets about white men and da-da-da and this and that, it's, it's all her way of, of set her, her Twitter code for I have black friends, which I don't know that she really has except on Twitter. And some of those don't even really like her. Right? So here's the deal. Here's the deal. We're going to talk about this and then I'm going to break out because I got to shut everything down. But in reality, we look at all angles of things. If you are watching any bit of this Kyle Rittenhouse trial, I mean, one, the ink, the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm, I should not podcast after working graveyard shift at this point. I'm just unable to um, formulate words. Uh, the inability of the persecute prosecuting attorney, perse- prosecuting attorney to make any kind of case. I mean, he is ridiculous. He's literally had the judge yell at him to say, you can't do this. What you're doing is unconstitutional for towards his civil rights, towards Kyle's civil rights. Right. I mean, it's the most ridiculous thing. And it is obvious from the FBI footage, from the other footage, all the stuff that has gone around that Kyle Rittenhouse was defending himself, that he was running from people who were pulling guns on him, who were attacking him with blunt objects, skateboards and whatever. And he defended himself. And unfortunately, tragically, two people died and one person was was horribly injured. But yet still, it was all in the line of self-defense. And everything he did there while he was there was legal. I mean, I guess there's some question about transporting weapons across state lines or whatever. But he went there with the intent to protect property of somebody he knew. To protect that property from being vandalized, looted, burned down, whatever. And then he was helping those people who were actually doing that. He was giving medical help as an EMT to those who were involved in the riots. And then somebody made a threat against him, came after him, someone pulled a gun on him, and he defended himself. As Christians, we look at all that and we go, okay. Now, will does God still require some form of repentance? I'm sure that Kyle, in, in if, well, I don't know. I, I can't say I'm sure. I don't know if Kyle's a Christian. But if I were in that set case... I'm pretty sure if I were somebody who, even in defending myself, took the life of someone else, I would be daily telling God, I am sorry. There would be remorse for that. Even though it it was them or him, I can't imagine that there's not some kind of remorse. I didn't see the whole thing of, of the trial yesterday. I've tried to keep up. I didn't see everything. But I know he broke down in tears. And then, of course, now all these people are out there mocking him 
somebody said that he took crying lessons from Brett Kavanaugh. I'm thinking, you know, if, if anybody was, is going to give crying lessons, go back and watch Jory's boohoo video about John MacArthur telling Beth Moore to go home. She could give people some fake crying uh, lessons in that. So all that to say, Jory Micah, the, the whole issue, the political issue about Kyle Rittenhouse and your insistence that he is nothing more than a, a domestic terrorist is ridiculous. It has no foundation in any kind of Christian faith. And I really, 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 again, implore you, Jory, repent. You are going down this, this weird path of universalism and leftism and liberalism and you're you're far gone at this point you have gone into the land of you are an unbeliever and you've basically made that clear you don't believe the bible is clear you don't believe you know you you only believe the words of jesus over paul and you only believe half of the words of jesus so repent jory Put your faith in, in the sacrificial work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Turn back from your, your heretical teachings. Come back into the orthodox teachings of the church. Repent and trust Christ. And that's my, that is my prayer for you. And that is my intention of these videos is to hopefully convince you of your need to repent and your need of a savior. And other than that, I don't have strong feelings about it. Thanks guys for watching. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button, uh, get all the content that I release here. Hopefully you got a couple more, uh, unsolicited videos and some other stuff coming up every day this month the fifth seal will be out uh persecuted church stuff and check that out um you can if you need to make comments i'm open question comments snide remarks leave them in the comments hit me up at the master's dog or the evangelical norm on twitter or norm dunham over on facebook all those places you can get me so thanks again as always preach the gospel at all times use words they're necessary and until, until next time soli deo gloria Thank mm -hmm. you.